It's Saturday, April 6th at 8.50 p.m. And your Purdue Boilermakers are going to the national championship. Let me repeat that part. Your Purdue Boilermakers are going to the national championship. Listen, listen. We said it's a business trip. We all said, hey, hey, don't just accept things the way they are. Holy moly, they played horribly. And they're going to the national championship. Sorry, I'm blowing eardrums. Breaking eardrums while I'm breaking the law. If you're an old school hip hop head. All right, let me talk about my sponsors before I go any further. My goodness gracious. Okay. Thank you to the people who made my sweatshirt, Home Field Apparel. Head over to homefieldapparel.com. Enter Boiled 23. Get 15% off. And when on campus, go towards the fire station and go in and yell at Adam. And be like, Adam, uh, I need food. I need drink. I, I am in desperate need of refreshment. Please, please, please uh, hook me up with some mac and cheese bites and some pretzels and a brew. Give me a pint and make sure it's got that Boiled Sports magnet on the bottom. Before you go over there, eatajs.com. Oh my gosh! I can't believe it. Okay, this is a different emotion than the final four. The final four was weeping for me. I'll be really honest. I was weeping with my son and hugging him. I could not believe they made it to the final four. This is, I am, I am in a different place. I'm in a different zone. Purdue played not a good game. Zach Eady did not play a great game. Braden Smith did not play a great game, but guess who did? Lance Jones came to play. Fletch Lawyer came to play. And Purdue overcomes Cinderella and all the crap around Cinderella. Let's be really honest. NC State, I said before, I got no issues with NC State. None. Still, no issues with NC State. No issues with their coach, Keats. Awesome. Fantastic run. Congratulations to the Wolfpack. Seriously, it's great. It's hard to beat Cinderella because everybody wants you to lose. Everybody does. And Purdue handled their business. They did it in ugly fashion, and they found a way. They're going to the national championship. When you needed someone to go to the rim because it was all clogged up and garbage filled, Fletch Lawyer went at the hoop. He didn't finish with a ton of points, but he played big. And in the first half, when you needed a big shot, it was Lance Jones. Matt Painter. Matt Painter looks like a genius, by the way, right now. If he's not certifiably a genius, he looks like one, right? Bringing Lance Jones seemed like something that was like, okay, now what? Lance Jones, two straight games, has done big damn things to make Purdue, to propel them, to propel them to bigger things. And now the biggest stage in college basketball is going to be occupied by your Purdue Boilermakers. This is unreal. It's unreal. And guess who's going? I'm going. I'm coming to Phoenix. I did this before the game. I reserved my flight. I'm going to Phoenix. And I want you to go too. If you're there, I look forward to seeing you. But I'm going to Phoenix. I could not be held back anymore. I was like, enough with the schedule already. Enough with the budget. I've got to be there. Me and my pal are going to Phoenix. My buddy Chris, who pushed and pushed and pushed and made sure that I went. I'm going to Phoenix, and I'm going to see you guys in Phoenix. There are many of you right now that are watching in Phoenix. God bless you for being there. Carrying the water for me until I got there. Is it over? It's not over. Clink, clink. It's not over. It's not over. I'm going to look at the stats real quick. I'm going to talk to you, and this might be a quick post game. I am on a cloud right now. I am absolutely soaring. I can't believe what just happened. I said to my daughter, I am stunned. She said, why are you stunned? You bought tickets before. I said, I bought refundable tickets before. I, I am stunned. I am shocked. I cannot wait to join you guys in Phoenix. Purdue wins 63-50 to 50 over NC State, earning their 34th win of the year. They are now 34-4. and four. They will face either Alabama or UConn. The game that the nation wanted, the game that the computers wanted, the game that the polls wanted might happen. Purdue versus UConn. The invincible, almighty UConn. Let's go. I want all of it. 
I want all of it. And I want Braden Smith not to huff paint before the game. What the heck, Braden? You're, you're, if not the best point guard in the nation, you're one of them. And today was not your finest hour. And all that says to me is you're due, bro. You're due. So how did Purdue do today? Whoop! They shot the three-pointer almost as good as they do on their average, 40%. NC State, stifling defense up top. It was guards versus guards. Zach Eady wore DJ Burns out. Wore him out. And if you didn't watch the game, go watch it. Because DJ Burns was tired. DJ Burns is a good dude. DJ Burns is a likable guy. And he was tired. DJ Horn was the story for NC State. And Purdue needed a counter to DJ Horn's 20 points. By the way, that's it. If you look at NC State's box score, that's it. Taylor off the bench had 11, but it was Horn. It was Horn all day. And by the, by what, six minute mark, when you saw Horn just gassed, you said, this thing's over. This thing's over. You could smell blood in the water, and Purdue cranked up the pressure. Purdue could have won by more. They didn't. They just said, take the foot off the gas. Merciful Matt Painter shows up again. This time, helps Coach Keats out. Purdue wins by 13. They hold NC State to nothing. 50 points in a modern college basketball game. They played NC State's pace, though. I will say that. NC State did a good job kind of exerting their will. So what happened in the game? Well, Purdue didn't get the free throw line as much as you'd like them to. Only 10 times. But guess what they did? When they went to the free throw line, they hit the damn free throws. 9 out of 10 from the line. Trey Kaufman win, win goes three for four from the free throw line. Edie, only two for two. I know, I know there's a narrative out there. I know the narrative from all you idiot Tennessee fans is all Edie does is go to the free throw line. And Purdue can't win without Edie going to the free throw line. But guess what they did today? Edie went twice and Purdue's going to the championship. I'm sick and tired of hearing you guys. Shut your mouths. You got nothing. Edie still finished with 20 points, 12 boards, 4 assists. Horrible in the turnovers, though. Let's be real honest. Five, five turnovers. Smith, five turnovers. He had three points, six assists, and eight rebounds. Really weird, really weird box score. If you do this a lot, you say, that is odd. Okay? But guess what? When the lights were brightest and the heat was hottest, Braden Smith knocked down a three that all but put the nail in the coffin of NC State. A massive three down the stretch. Trey Kaufman Wren played really big in the first half. Put a lot of pressure on Middlebrooks, Diara, and, uh, and Horn as well. Horn was in foul trouble from the jump. And it, bigger than that, he was in lung trouble. He was just gassed. And it was because Purdue's bigs were just doing everything they could to make them tired. They wore them out. So what are the big three? We've talked about this all season. The magic formula for Purdue to win, get the big three involved. Edie with 20, 12, 9 rebounds. 20, pardon me, 20 points, 12 rebounds, 4 assists. Lance Jones, 14 points, 4 rebounds, and a steal. And Fletch Lawyer, 11 points, 2 assists, and 4 rebounds. Are those glowing stats? No, but that's a big three. That's where the balance comes from. When they collapse two or three men, you've got to have somebody knock down shots. Mason Gillis off the bench, also eight points, and he was two for five from three. I would have liked to hit one. There was one in the right corner early in the second half that I think would have absolutely blown the game open. And a couple times, Purdue was flirting with that lead, right? They'd push it out to 5. They'd push it out to 12. And then all of a sudden, the, the lead would contract in to back down to 5, right? Get it out to 12, and it would contract in. But the last time it got up to 12, NC State was gassed. And Cinderella's slipper no longer fit, and that was it. That was it. Purdue now 34-4 and four as they head to the championship on Monday night. You and I will be there together watching the championship in Phoenix. The NCAA tournament championship in Phoenix will, con it will include one of, two one of two teams. One of two will be Purdue Boilermakers. That is A-OK. -okay. Chris Harder is here. He says he's first, and he got it. Unlike some of you guys the other day, Chris Harder, when he says first, he's really first. Chris, join me in Phoenix, won't you? Boiler Bugle says, woohoo! Melissa Hunt says, be down, we're going to the Natty. Can you believe it, Melissa? Are you, if you're there, uh, I'm going to see you there. If you're not there, you should get to Phoenix. It's time for us to at least give a high five, if not a hug. Let's go. Um, let's see. Uh, Boiler Bugle. Let's see. Uh, wait, Chris Carter Harder says, who's the hottie in the glasses? Okay. 
I, I, I didn't wear two in a row, but I really, these glasses are growing on me. I'll be real honest. I think these are the, these are the jam right here. This is my fit. Adam P says, hello from the State Farm Arena. Adam P is watching Boiled Sports or listening from State Farm Arena. Uh, awesome. Uh, Adam, let's, let's, uh, let's bro hug soon. Tomo, LFG, uh, Ted Berkey, ugly and beautiful. That's it. That's it. And we've seen these in the past couple years. A game can be ugly. A win is beautiful regardless, especially especially in the Final Four. Eric Johnson says, not the best performance, but a beauty of a win. Robert Gill, welcome all. A Coldy says, digging, uh, dogging, dogging man, dogging man fired up. I'm, I am completely fired up. In case you haven't gotten this, I will come down a little bit. I'm going to go watch the UConn game in a second, but I wanted to come give you the, the uh, post game. Andy Day says, one more game. One more game. Ted, Ted Berkey says, finish it. Greg V. Avery Johnson may be the worst former college basketball analyst in the nation. It's incredible to hear him talk. A guy that's done everything from coaching to playing and talk out of his ass when he speaks. It's it's wild to me. Kevin in Albuquerque says, yes. Andy Day, fired up B-Dad. You got that right. Tomo, boiler TF up. I don't know what TF means. I'm kidding. Andy P, OMG listening live from the arena. Energy here is freaking nuts. Well, let's keep it up because I'm coming to see you guys and I'm going to be loud. Listen, when I was in Detroit, I was very subdued. And my buddy Billy can tell you about it because I was nervous as hell. I'm not that anymore. I'm not that. I'm past that. Let's do it. Let's go to State Farm Arena. State Farm Stadium. I don't even know. I keep saying this. I don't know what it's called. Jason D says they would not have won this game last year. They're different. They are built different. All years, the all year the metrics love this Purdue team. The pollsters love Purdue team. And of course, you and I love this Purdue team. But look what they do. Look, look what they do. They freaking go to the national championship. It's real. Pinch yourself, but this is real. Holy moly. Holy moly. Britt, Jason D says they would not have won this game. Okay. Britt Williams, boiler up, got the dub, not playing our best game. Word. Pat Gottschall says, BTFU Boiler Nation, bring on the Death Star. Let's go. Uh, UConn's impossible to beat, I'm told. So I got to deal with that. Troy Hoover, clink, clink. Uh, Mark Garrity says, uh, held NC State to 50. Pretty damn good. Um, T. Rick, BTFU didn't even play that well, and the game was never close. Brock Stepler says, Purdue is playing for a national championship Monday night. Purdue is playing for a national championship Monday night. In the words of Anish Ramaswamy, can you believe there's another game? This isn't it? It's just a party every week, guys? Girls? Keep texting my family. I cannot believe this. And if you're anything like me, the texts are nonstop. One of my favorite moments tonight, my good buddy Roy, who was my boss when I was an RA at Tarkington, calling me at halftime being like, Dude, where are you? Let's hook up. And I'm like, I'm not there. And I was like, okay, okay. You go get this win. Go get this win, Roy. And then guess what? I'm going to see you in Phoenix. That's a promise. I'm coming, Roy. Joe Sasser says, uh, get the bad game out of the way. onto the natty, baby. And it's going to take the A game to beat UConn. No, no doubt about it. T-Rick says, Burns was gassing within five minutes. I knew the point was over. Yeah, it was. Burns was in trubs. Uh, Matt Borders says, bad game out of the way. Word. Robert Gill says, Smith saving his best for Monday. Got all of his misses out of the way. Yeah, that was an ugly game. Eric Johnson, Jones and Lawyer saved our asses. There's no doubt. Uh, let's see. Need to be in verse LF, G, 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 let's F. Go, 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 go. Mr. Matt DSM, congrats and have fun. MH, MHC says, one more game. That's what Fletch Lawyer does. Blaine J, how many pairs of glasses do you have? I have seven pairs of glasses. Good question. Ben Cotton, choo-choo mothers, as some very smart people would say. Ben, are you going to Phoenix? Because you should, and we should meet up. We should enjoy some time together. I tell you what I need. I need a cigar in Phoenix. I need a cigar. That's that's really, I got to tell you, that's what I'm looking for. I need a cigar in Phoenix. Uh, Jay Boak says, Boak? Jay Boak says, going to have to play better versus UConn. There is no doubt about that. Melly Melly, till my dying day, says, I keep telling people Edie's best attribute is his stamina. I'm going to argue with you. I'm going to say his best attribute is his cool head because the dude gets absolutely wailed on. His stamina is probably his second. Um, his killer mentality is, I've got, okay. Um, sorry, I'm blown up still. Yeah, he's got a lot of good attributes. It's probably why he's a two-time NPO. All right, can we, can we, we can meet there. Alex Chatton says, just 
uh, marking that I was hit here the night Purdue advanced to the national championship game. Yep, I'm glad you're here, Alex. Who's Johnny says, my man Fletch. Boiler up, Kevin Pass says this was a big, t- a big 10 win, like beating Rutgers at Rutgers. Yes, it was a grind. It was a painful, disgusting, gross grind. I agree. And you, Purdue was trained for this. I know DJ Burns said Purdue had never faced anybody like him, but guess what, DJ? This is the BS that we deal with every night in the Big Ten. This was kind of like, all right. And guess what? Purdue pushed that lead out to 18 points with just a couple minutes left, and that was it. No gas left in the tank for them uh, Them Wolfpack. And like I said, I got nothing against the Wolfpack. I like NC State. Neither being versed says a Purdue can win it all. Melissa Hunt says, I'm not there. Work obligations got me stuck. Watch with the whole fam, though. Okay, listen. I'm going to say this because I don't want anybody feeling guilty about not getting to Phoenix because obviously I feel bad about not being there tonight. And I'm going to tell Adam if he's listening, Adam, cancel my booth. I'm not going to be there on Monday. I know we made plans, but guess what? I'll be there for the spring game now. There's my deal. I'll broadcast at the spring game, okay? So Saturday next week, I made a deal. I'm going to come there. It's not going to be as lively as as the Final Four. I know, but I got I to gotta go to Phoenix. I got to go to Phoenix. So Adam... I apologize, and I will text you shortly. I'm not going to be at AJ's on the night. But Anish will. Anish will be at AJ's on championship night in case you want to see a BS, uh, big-time personality, handsome dude. Uh, Nolan23 says survive in advance. That's it. Uh, or am I dreaming? No, you're not. Judith Johnson says, I really did want a pretty game, but hey. I think you'd rather have a win than a pretty game. KC Jonas says, let's go. jack o 22! How are you, buddy? Um, Purdue is going to play their sixth NCAA tournament game in 2024. Did you know that was allowed? No, I didn't. This is all new to me, jack o Leonard. By the way, that's Jay Money, in case you didn't know. That's his call sign here. Um, he can explain the name to you sometime. Um... Casey Jonas says, I'm so happy I'm with you. 64, at 64 Dilly, at 64 D Willie says, pinch, pinch, not dreaming. No, you are not dreaming. This is real. I can't believe it. My daughter, TBD, is over there. And I told her, I'm shocked and stunned and I cannot believe it. I'm with you. Preston Grimes says, BTFU, wish I was there and I'm with you. Ron Gable, my pal, says, next up, game six. Can you believe it, Ron? Can you believe it? Can you believe it, Ron? Are you going to Phoenix, Ron? Because you should go to Phoenix. Ron is the most well-traveled sports fan that I know. He goes to everything. Uh, He is a fantastic Purdue fan, a great alum. I'd like to see him in Phoenix. Um, I guarantee you, flights are drying up as we speak. If you're waiting, go get your flight. Maniacally, Steve says, going to the ship. Going to win a chip. I don't know if we call it a chip or a ship. Regardless... Uh, it's tasty. Um, my son told a joke to me when he was like five or six, and I think I'm going to use it. Do you know what type of snacks winners eat? Championships. Yeah. Five-year-old joke, and it's still awesome. Um, let's see. Let's go down a little bit. Uh, da, 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 da. Nate Anderson says sailboats. What's that mean? I have no idea what that means. Sailboats? I don't know what that means, but that's okay. Ben Cotton says, I wish I were there going to Phoenix, but I'm unemployed right now. Okay. And my kids want to see the eclipse. Okay. This is good. So I'm assuming the fact that I can't go means Purdue is going to cut down the nets. Listen, I want everyone who feels guilty for not being there to not feel bad. I listen, I, my wife is very unhappy with me going to this. I don't know if she's listening right now. She's not super happy. I gotta go. Like, this is like the siren song. I, I, It was killing me not being there today, but I'm so glad I was there with my family. I got to watch it with the people I love, and I actually watched a game without being a jerk. Well, I'm a jerk. Without being a bigger jerk than normal. Was I a jerk, TBD? Okay, she says no. I was loud, though. Um, Sporadically loud. IC says, putting TKR on Burns so Edie wasn't pulled out was a solid move by Painter. Painter was smart. Painter has been great this entire month. Painter has been doing what Painter's capable of doing. He's been great this tournament. Uh, David Doman says, partying like it's 1969. Let's go. If you're, if you're a history buff, 1969 is the last time Purdue went to the national championship game. That time was with Rick Mount and company. It's been a long time. My dad was a junior at Purdue. 
the last time Purdue went to the national championship. My dad was 21. Alfred Dab was 21. I told you, this is not it for this team and this program. They are going back. They are going back. This isn't it, and guess what? Oh, no, I'm 26. He says he hate Cam, hates Cam Spencer. Yeah, that may come from the Rutgers stuff, right? Matt Keller says, uh, can't turn over the ball in UConn or bad things happen. Yeah, they make you pay. A really good team, really good team. But guess what? Purdue's the underdog. Purdue's the underdog. Purdue gets to wear black jerseys. Purdue gets to put on the bad guy mentality and say, okay, let's go bust up a freaking repeat uh, championship effort. Colin Campbell says, Edie, the most consecutive 20 and 10 games in the tournament history. Goat. He is the goat. He is the goat. Um, let's see. Troy Hoover says, winner, don't eat cheese. It's what? What am I? I gosh, there's so many things I don't understand when I read these. Jim Garfinkel says, NC State played great defense, but the Boilers found... The capital D, too. They found the D. They gave him the D. Um, Jim Huguenard, who was on Twitter and, and doing some very good stuff on there, says the Boilers have a shot. Uh, they have more than a shot. It's more than a shot. Uh, they're the, one of the final two teams remaining. John Harrell, my good pal, my long pal, says, I think it's called the State Farm Coliseum. Okay, the Coliseum. Let's go with that. Sure. Um, the modern-day Coliseum. Sure. I'm going to go with that. John, are you going to meet me in Phoenix? Uh, Nate Hartman, my neighbor at Ross Aid, says, beat Tennessee without being able to shoot, beat NC State, turning it over a, a billion times. He didn't say that, but I said that. With a bad game from Braden Smith, grinding it out, BTFU. Word. Uh, let's see. Scroll down a little bit. Dylan says, what a time to be alive. Dylan, for your pops, brother. For your props. For your dad. Glad you're here, man. Glad you're here. Uh, T-Rex says, Bama up 23-18. Thanks for the live update. I do not have a TV on. Um, Jim Ron says, let's go. Oh, this is a tough name for me. Oka Bue, 13, says, Alabama is up. We may have to play them instead. I want that. I want that heat. I don't care. Do you care? As a Purdue fan, do you care if it's Alabama or UConn? I think I want UConn more because it's been them all year, and I want Purdue oh, to... I don't know what that is. Okay. I don't know what's going on, guys. Let me see. There we go. Okay. I don't know what happened there. All of a sudden, I've got CBS Sports playing in my ears. I have no idea what just happened. So I apologize. Hopefully, I still have volume because I just messed around. Mike Mejia said, I'd rather be the underdog and play UConn. Yeah. I think I'm with you. I think I'm with you on that. Uh, Dylan says, love you, Dad. I cried grown man tears. Yeah, brother. Yeah, brother. I get you. I get you. Ah, Nita being verse says, don't care who we play. I'm focused on the Boilermakers making history. And Nate Harmon says, I want UConn. So I think the general consensus, based on what I'm seeing, is we'd rather play UConn than repeat versus Alabama. Regardless, regardless, house money. I said this earlier tonight on Twitter to somebody. Is that Judith? Can't remember. Sorry. Um, I, I am I'm stunned. I'm shocked. I'm happy. I'm glad we're all here. I am glad all season you have come to join me in the post game and talk about things. And can you believe, can you believe it's actually happening? You know how hard it is to come into a season and have high expectations and to meet them. I say this to my son all the time. History is made when someone actually does something that they're expected to do. History's made in a lot of different ways, but in sports, it's so damn hard to do what Purdue has done. Purdue all season was in the top three. And at the same time, everyone in the world doubted them. And guess what? On Twitter, you're going to hear more bullshit from people talking stupid crap because they don't know ball. They don't know that Purdue has won so many different ways and they continue to grind and they continue to be an absolute mother of a team. A hard out, as they say. John Reinhardt says, what's up with Grant Hill? Pedestrian, really? Hope Bama wins. Can't listen to, to these East Coast honks slobbering all over Hurley. Yeah, um, I'm not watching right now, so you guys are in a worse position than me. I'm here in front of me with a, with a TV that's off. It is now 24-23 UConn, it looks like. So UConn has taken the lead. TBD gives me the uh, score update because uh, she's the best. 
Fatal or Fatal says, give me Braden not playing awful, and he will not play awful. That's my big prediction. Kevin Pass said, I would love to see a live stream of Chauncey or even Waldron Street. Oh! Boys and girls, long-suffering Purdue fans, especially, and I'm going to focus in on those older than, let's say, 30 right now. I love all you younger boilers. I think you guys are awesome. I think you've done an amazing thing, but older boilers... You've paid for this because you've stuck with this stuff, and it's been hard. It's been hard. I always say this. You don't choose Purdue. Purdue chooses you, right? You go to school there because you want to have, get a good job. Your dad was a Boilermaker grad. Even our, our friends uh, who have didn't graduate from Purdue, I, I mean, m- much props to them, right? Our friends from Lef- Lafayette who have decided – yeah, I'm going I'm a Purdue fan still even though I'm not a grad, but mercy, it's been tough. It's been tough. That long video that got up to 40,000 views for my friend who was put out there. Um, it tells about the ringing out that happened for so many of us and the young people may not quite get this. And it's okay. I'm not saying you're bad because you don't get it. I'm saying it's different. And thank God you're in the era you're in. Thank God LBD is going to Purdue next year. As a Purdue student with this new world where Purdue goes to national championships. I like this world better than the world that I grew up in. Where it was like, well, how are they going to trip over themselves this year? It's a new world. It's a different world. And I believe Matt Painter has figured some things out that it's okay to take a deep breath on the sidelines when the game's close and your your team's life is on the line. It's okay. It's all right. You don't have to lean on anal- analytics all the time, Matty. You're a smart guy. And you've got great players that are easy to root for and that are really good at basketball. But old Purdue fans, you paved the way. I want to say hats off to all of you. And the older you are, you've really paved the way. I appreciate all of you who are, who came in front of me. And I appreciate everyone who is wearing the golden black tonight. And I cannot believe we're going to the national championship. Let me look at these comments one more time. Uh, B. Schottmeyer says, this is Brian from Cleveland. Great to talk to you after the Tennessee game. Word. Can't believe our guys are playing for the title. Amazing. Amazing. Saying the words makes it weird. Jay says... Uh, Braden has to play better. He needs to beat UConn. And I don't know if that's Jay, my friend Jill, or not. I can't tell. Because Jill, one of my best, best pals in the world, told me afterwards that was her. She was Jay. So, um, yeah. Um, let's see. Adam P. says, okay, got to get going. Watch the second game. Yeah, go do that. Go do that. And I'm about to call this a night. Handle Jones says... Is there a link or a stream showing Chauncey Hill right now? I need it. I need it, too. I need it. I'm with you, Handle. Handle's my buddy. Handle's my pal. Handle and I first met in person in Louisville when Carson Edwards was pistol whipping the entire NCAA tournament field. And we became fast friends. Handle's a great dude, a boilermaker, a doctor, a tremendous human being, a man of faith. He's what I wish I was. He's a great guy. And Handle... Boilermaker fans like Handel deserve this. Deserve this run. Motor City Boiler says, that was an ugly game. Going to get stomped off if they play like that on Monday. I agree. Gentry BN says, also hate Cam Spencer. Love Braden. He also plays awesome after a bad game. Yep, he'll be motivated. The Westfield kid will be motivated. T-Rex says, enjoy the finals, man. You deserve it. Thank you. I don't deserve anything. I am blessed to have what I've got, but I am going to be in Phoenix, and I'm going to meet up with many of you guys, and I'm going to call it a night. That is it for me. Happy Final Four, and guess what? It actually means there's another game because your boilers have earned it. Matt Painter, all of a sudden, he's shaking loose all the old cobwebs, all the little bugaboos that would come into play. He's like, if you watched him on the sideline, there's no more lick lipping. There's no more hand wringing with the with the towel because his hands are sweating. Dude's just doing his thing, man. Karen Gerlock says, God bless Boiler Dad and LBD. Thank you, Karen. Thank you. I'm speechless. For Coach Katie, uh, you're going uh, to Phoenix. Karen, thanks for everything along the path. It's been fun. It's been a lot of fun. I can't wait to go to Phoenix. Um, let's see. 
Yeah, this is reality, Matt B. Nate Hartman, one more. Nate, if I don't see you at the spring game next week, I'll see you in the, in the stands in the fall. And I'm going to see you guys on this very channel, this YouTube channel. But the next, let's see. Yeah, the next time I'll see you, maybe I'll have a cacti behind me. Who knows? I don't know. I really don't know how I'm going to set up. I don't know how anything's going to be out there. I don't know what my hotel is. I don't know what my rental car is. But I do know I'm flying into Phoenix tomorrow afternoon. Hope we're on the same flight together. Very good reminder, Kevin Bryant. I'm going to sign off with this one thing. Because I've been in text communication with my pal Ken out in Portland. And Superfly. My friends, my family, keep fighting. Keep fighting. You've got so many people behind you. Keep fighting. Everybody loves you. Go get him, Ken. And guess what, Ken? We get to keep texting during games because Purdue keeps winning. And that's that's a fun byproduct of this whole damn thing. All right. God bless you. Hammer down. And I'll see you guys in Phoenix. We'll see you.